Well, Nancy was kind enough to give me 15 to 20 minutes to cover 30 years. <laughs> That's quite a task <laughs> with this guy. You know, the unexpected passing of the incomparable Dennis Franks, Mr. Energy, and our five-star general. Just a couple names that I gave him over the years that he loved. And my best friend and partner of nearly 30 years has left us in shock, shattered, and broken. It's hard to believe. Now, I've given 10,000 speeches to over a million people, and this is by far the most difficult that I've ever done. Yet my greatest honor, my greatest honor, I do not think I can get through this without breaking down. Sorry, Dennis, I'm just not that strong. Dennis always gave more than he took. And by the way, I wrote this out. I could do it by memory, but it's a guarantee that I'll stay on time. <laughs> but Dennis always gave more than he took. He was my blues brother, my other half, and my confidence. <laughs> Together, we could do no wrong. At least he couldn't. <laughs> he made us exponentially better. I give all the credit to him for what we became. There's three facets or dimensions to Dennis's being or persona. His three loves and passions. First, number one, his family, Nancy, Lauren, Katie, also his brothers, sisters, and parents. Number two, football. Michigan and the Eagles. And number three, his Market America family. Well, he also was a rock star. We all know that. His music and playing the guitar. But I'd like to say something about number one. Dennis loved his family. Lauren and Katie, he loved you both so much. He was the greatest dad. He worried about you when you were small, and even so when you grew up and got married and started your own families. He always wanted to make sure that you were safe and protected. And when Lauren moved to Australia, he said that Nancy hated it, but he secretly told me that he hated it too because uh, they missed her. So he told me that he wanted to work in Australia, and <laughs> he made it a point <laughs> to be there more to see you. That's the type of dad he was. And Katie, he always had a sweet little joke. His Katie, oh, my Katie, she'll never going to leave me. She's, even when she grows up, she's not going to leave me, even when she's married. And you never did, and he loved it. <laughs> he loved it. Well, you were his shining stars. He was the greatest dad and made his life, you made his life so happy and gave him nothing but joy. He was always so proud of you. And he was so excited about the future and he loved being Diesel. Diesel and Mimi, Mia, <laughs> he would say to us, that's my new life, JR, and I love it. I loved when Dennis was happy. Lauren and Katie, you gave Dennis his most treasured gift and legacy, his grandchildren, Izzy, Cruz, and William. Now, your diesel loved you so much. We all saw photos of you as, uh, with him as you grew, and, uh, you know, he was so proud of you. Dennis just bubbled over, saying, look at this, and look at... He just loved it. And Nancy... This is so hard because I love you so much, and I know how much you loved each other. You were the love of his life, the perfect pair, a dynamic duo, an example for all of us to live by. 40 years of love and still not enough time. He was so excited to live this life with you, and he loved it. His bride, his hope, and his happiness. <laughs> He loved you more than he even loved himself. And that's a lot. 
<laughs> I had a dream last night. Okay, it wasn't a dream, Nancy, like he broke your glasses. The room lit up, and Dennis asked me to read this poem. It's only two lines. <laughs> In all the world, there's no heart for me like yours. In all the world, there's no love for you like mine. <laughs> okay, Dennis, I did it. <laughs> He'll be with you forever. Now, number two, football. I want to talk about that, but I'll leave it to Coach Vince, I mean the Vince and Coach Dick Vermeil. By the way, after a player is no longer on a team to call, the man coach is the highest honor, the highest honor. But uh, I'll speak about number three, his Mark in America family. Now there's certain contributions that Dennis made that shaped the future and defined market America, <clears throat> and it, 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 it defined what it became. Those contributions and memories and stories that shaped the future are too many to share here today, but I'll address them in articles in the company magazine monthly. It's another movie like Invincible, <laughs> really. He believed 100% in our mission and the unfranchised model from the very beginning when there was nothing but a concept and an idea. He gave up everything to join me in making Market America a success. He immediately moved to Greensboro to help start. He was my other half in my confidence. He was the ultimate unfranchised owner and executive and led by example. Wow. <laughs> What I mean by that is he actually was an unfranchised owner, first and foremost, and it took priority over being an executive. And he did the business as a UFO from the bottom up, even though he didn't have to do it as a corporate management team member and executive. He played by all the rules and requirements in the company to earn commissions and retail products. He did it to lead by example so that he knew firsthand what it took and how to do it. He took excuses away because he was asking them to do what he did. He practiced what he preached and led by example and therefore was highly credible. No, in fact, he was incredible. He was the ultimate player coach. His boundless love and belief in people resulted in positively influencing tens of thousands of people and thousands of success stories. It has been the greatest honor of my life to have this great man follow me for 30 years. He's irreplaceable, irreplaceable. Keep in mind that his Market America story has never really been told and is largely unknown because he's not one to toot his own horn, because he tooted the horns of others and his teammates throughout life. That was Dennis. The first 10 years we were family with Nancy and the girls and Amber, and they were the very best years of our life. We both lived in South Jersey in the beginning, and he moved to North Carolina for me. That's how crazy he was. He coached football at Page High School, as well as became an influencer in the community. While he built Market America with me to a level that became acclaimed in the industry and worldwide. As I said, he is and was my confidence and the other guy. That was always, he was always crazier than me. And he kept me in check if I was out of line or went too far. Only he could do that. <laughs> Dennis is and was my best friend, although you would never know it. You see, you wouldn't know it because it was unspoken. Actions speak louder than words. We didn't have to say it because we lived it and had an unequal level of respect for each other, and we both were players on the field doing it and making it happen. And anybody that's played knows that there's a different respect for the other guy that plays as well as you. <sighs> However, I do regret not showing it more 
in an off-the-field manner by spending time together. From the first days, he had an instant understanding <coughs> and the same unwavering belief that I did, had. It was his, not mine. <sighs> he was a leader and a lover and has been at the mountaintop and other things and to choose me to follow for 30 years without reservation and to accomplish what we did uh, together in the beginning uh, when no one really believed and we, he would sacrifice it all to, uh, to do this is the greatest honor uh, that I've ever had. And it must have been fate or destiny or meant to be. Our first meeting was an instant connection. I got to tell you about it, how we met. I call it the evaluation approach where you don't try to get people in, but you just try, you know, ask them if they will look at it because they might know the right people. So there was a sequence of re or a referral thread. I had a fraternity brother, Larry Macy, who was a, a realtor in, in uh, Ocean City, who knew da Dave Schultz of the Flyers, who knew Larry Durst, a pharmacist. I think Bill Berge, the linebacker, was in there somewhere, who knew Vince Papali, who knew Dennis Franks. Vince, maybe I have it backwards a bit, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? And I think Ron Jaworski was even in there somewhere <laughs> for a while. But Larry Macy, the fraternity brother, was an Ocean City realtor, and we met at his office because Dennis had a summer home in Ocean City. His reaction and his understanding were rare. I never had an experience like this in 30 years. Um, what he said was, wow, <laughs> you sure are excited. That's amazing, and it's a lot. I don't understand it all, but I get the gist of it. And your passion and enthusiasm is compelling. I want to learn more, and I, I think I want to join you. I never had anybody say that before. And then he wanted literature and a copy of the plan. So I ripped off the paper that I had been drawing him in magic markers, all different colors, like modern art, and handed it to him. He says, this is it? <laughs> well, we booked a follow-up in uh, Washington Township. Uh, when I got there, he had redrawn the version of the plan of the presentation, very neatly and organized in steps. I gotta hold it up. I, I, I have, I'm gonna put this in a frame. I have the original in Miami. I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, so that never happened before and never happened again in 30 years. Dennis had succeeded in Cambridge and other weight loss programs that use TV shows to generate ads. So he was the first guy that really had experience that understood the depth of what I was showing him. Um, and he also had a, a uh, mailbox, et cetera, so he liked the unfranchised concept. So we took trips to Pittsburgh, and we had these big cell phones. We were ahead of the time. I mean, they were that big. And, you know, in order to call home or to connect and make sure that the people were going to be there. Um, so he asked me, JR, where's the product literature? Uh, because, you know, I haven't seen it, and I want to be ready. So we don't have any, Dennis. He said, don't have any. We need it. I said, well, Dennis, that's what you're for. He says, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> that was Dennis. Um, well, he then led the Kevin Buckman, a brother from another mother, frickin' frack. That's a whole other chapter. <laughs> His first meeting, he had 500 people at the, I can't remember, it was the Hyatt or the Marriott, Cherry Hill. That's an all-time record. It's never happened before and never will happen again. Now, it sounds good, actually, but actually it was a problem because there was no follow-ups. <laughs> that led to the basic five, the holy grail of the business where we had a meeting at Ron Jaworski's Country Club Golf Club, and Kevin and a few other people were there, and that was the beginning. 
I asked him to move to North Carolina. He did it without reservation. I don't know what Nancy thought, but... And then Dennis, Marty, Jerry, Kevin, Mark, and JR were the Rat Pack. We were all so different. Motley crew. A motley crew. But we were cemented together like a poxy with two ingredients, respect and belief. And we were inseparable even though we fought all the time. Market America is a world-renowned company and it's solid because it's retail driven. I have to give Dennis Franks 100% credit for becoming retail driven. He was the man. So shortly after that, we had a, a cruise in order to sh shoot an infomercial or video to try to attract people. And a magic moment happened on that cruise. We had a product called Thermochrome 5000. Nancy remembers it well. And a couple of old cronies that I brought on board from my past, Royce McCoy and Tino Caccioli, tried to pull a mutiny. They tried to copy the product and steal our people on the cruise. When Dennis got wind of this, he backed them up in a corner and face to face he said, don't you steal my dream. Wow. So he and Nancy sat Lauren and I down. He said, listen, we believe in what you're doing and we're committed. We will commit full time and come on board and help you build it. You don't need those guys. We have your back and we will do it with you. We believe in you and the plan. The rest is history. Well, that was a magic moment because we wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for that. They came on board full time. Nancy ran events for five years. A lot of people don't remember that. Uh, and did anything it took to help us. And secretly, Lauren and I hope she will come back now. <laughs> uh, we have such great memories, girls, of Tyson's Corner and uh, the Patriot Center and the times we had together. Circumstances, perceptions, uh, what friends think, jobs, <coughs> income, all get in the way of the business. And I had a demonstration where I called it the box. The box that you get stuck in, if you get in the business, you can get out of the box. Uh, we were doing a presentation at the Patriot Center, and I forgot, it, it, was, it, it was early on in the presentation, and I skipped it. I got lost in my notes. An hour and a half later, I remember Dennis is in the box. <laughs> you know, so I, I switched gears and went back to this part of the presentation about you can get out of the box in life if you get in the business. And he, that was, he's claustrophobic. <laughs> and he had a red, white, and blue Market America jacket on. He must have been, he was sweating to death. I opened the box and he jumped out like a jack in the box, like uh, Superman. <laughs> Never forget that. Um, so our life was like that, but the years flew by like a blink. <sighs> you know, if you could play football your whole life and not get old, you'd be a good player at 50. But you do get old. He became the greatest player in market America. From the beginning, it was an instant understanding and love and belief in the same thing. No word needed, but a glance and an audible on the line of scrimmage called the right play every time. He believed so much, <laughs> he believed even more than I did on his own. He made up his own mind and that was it. He could not leave or retire even when other influences and opportunities that were very attractive came around because he loved the people and they loved him too much. He was the greatest player in the Market America game. He used to say, I used to get paid for moving bodies and now I get paid to move minds. 
And I need to tell you, he did it through the heart. <sighs> he will never really die because his influence on me and thousands of other people. There's too much unknown, forgotten, and never told about this saint. And I call him a saint because he was pure and came from a higher play, uh, plane or level of love and compassion. He found the good in everybody. He loved every individual individually. He loved every individual individually. Listen, no one gets out of life alive. I've been looking for that person. They don't exist. Everyone dies, but not everyone lives. Now, if I dare bring up the dash, which was the main theme in our company, this man lived it. And what I mean by that is the graveyard is filled with tombstones of past lives, but between all the birth dates and death dates, on every tombstone is a dash. The dash represents their life and story and what they did in their life, in their life, and the time here. The proverbial question is what did they do with the dash? Well, I can say that Dennis Franks was the epitome of living the dash. <laughs> he lived life to the fullest and always gave more than he took. He loved family, friends, and people. He found the good in everyone. He enriched the lives of others and bubbled over with excitement, achievement, success, and adventure. There was never a dull moment with Dennis Franks. Dennis loved his new lake home in North Carolina and wanted us to come and spend time. I was going to, to go, but regret allowing things to get in the way. Don't let things get in the way. <laughs> Dennis would say, do those things now. Still leaving us lessons, aren't you, Dennis? You didn't have to go this far. I really do understand I really do not understand what happened. Because listen, it, it, I was sure that he would outlive us all and be the last to go. I thought he would be speaking at my funeral and carrying on the legacy of the UFOs. He was so robust, strong, and energetic. I suppose a lifetime to us is but a second on God's watch, and it really didn't make a difference. But still, I'm not sure how to find true north without him. He was my compass. Now, time and success and the demands on both of our times separated us geographically, but never separated us mentally or in the heart. Dennis was the party. Dennis was the party. He was every dance on stage. He will be every smile in our heart and on our faces from here on out. I didn't have any regrets in my life until now. I always went out and made happen what I wanted. This sudden event is a wake up call causing us to reevaluate everything we do, <coughs> what we are doing up to now. I have realized that all of my priorities are out of order and upside down and what seemed so important was unimportant. Dennis Franks was important. I regret not spending more time for reminding him how much I loved him. I'm sure he left a huge to-do list and an inbox on his desk that's overflowing. And suddenly he got called and none of it really matters now, does it? This doesn't matter. What he said to us and what he gave every day was so subtle, huge, and comforting that we took it for granted. And now forever, we will experience a huge void and emptiness without his physical presence. He was so low maintenance for me that he, he was taken for granted. He was totally self-powered. But he actually maintained me with love and belief and understanding. 
He was, and his life, uh, 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 as an example, was bedrock. You can be sure of it. Always fun, always uplifting, the beacon light for all to follow. And with a smile, he would look deep into your eyes with a level of sincerity that melted you. There will never be another Dennis Franks. He truly was, above all else, a rock star. <laughs> oh my God, I can't accept this. Dennis, I love you. I just wanted to tell you one more time, but you left before I could. I know, it's my fault. One of the last Zoom calls, the day before he left, um, before he left us, was to a group of the leaders and sales team. He called for everyone to do more. Stop waiting for the dam to be broken. It's time to step up, he said. Now, some of you were there and heard the message, including Kevin and Andrew and Jim. This was out of character. He broke down emotionally in, in tears, which I never saw in, in this manner before with Mr. Energy in th 30 years. He was trying to tell us something. He said that he did not feel himself and he asked for leaders to step up and do more. It said a lot more than words could express. We're still sharing the message of how important it is not to wait for it to be over in order to do something today. Then as I got it, after the movie Invincible about Dennis and Vince Papali as, and the Eagles, Bonnie Church helped them write a book called The Last Laugh that we want to resurrect. But the book centers on Dennis and Vince's philosophy of life and success called the Victor's Code. It plays hand, and I'm sure that Vince will explain that, but it plays hand in hand, uh, uh, and it's the center of what Dennis's, Dennis Frank's being was all about and what he wanted to pass on to, to immortality. I gotta tell you, he was the epitome of the Victor's Code. He lived it. Vision, valor, vehemence, veracity, vitality, vigor, and victory. And Dennis, you were victorious in life. I was blessed and lucky to have crossed paths with this great man and have collided in our missions and ambitions in life at the right time in the right place. I got lucky. It was a magic moment, and I have to tell you, it changed everything. But without a doubt, he was the most influential person in my Market America life in the last 30 years of time when there was nothing to believe in. He and his belief were everything. Dennis, your work, although known by tens of thousands of people, is still invisible, as it is impossible to know all the hearts that you touched. It was endless. But we are forever grateful that you touched ours. Grief never ends, but it changes. It is a passage, not a place to stay. Grief is not a sign of weakness, nor a lack of faith. It is a price of love. That leaves a heartache that no one can heal, but love leaves a memory that no one can steal. It's like something magical comes from these places of life and death. We don't understand it on this side, but one day it'll all make sense. May you rest in peace, Dennis, knowing that we will be here for Nancy, Lauren, Katie, and your entire family. Thank you for all these lessons. Until we meet again, my friend, we will stay focused and stay the course, his favorite saying. God bless you. Thank you. I love you forever, Dennis.